What's going on guys? It's Corbin here from AcousticWorld.net and I wanted to create a quick crash course for you on how to learn bluegrass guitar uh, quickly and easily. And so as you can see, I don't have my guitar in front of me here. This is going to be more of a, I guess, uh, a step-by-step -step things that you should do to accelerate your journey and how to uh, get started. And it's going to be more uh, mindset things rather than me just like showing you a chord or a lick on the guitar. Um, so these are going to be seven steps uh, you can take along your bluegrass journey that will help you uh, become skilled at bluegrass guitar faster and easier and things that I wish I knew uh, when I first started playing bluegrass. So we'll jump right in now. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have the right uh, kind of acoustic guitar and the right strings. So. The strings are honestly less important. Uh, you just want to make sure you have a heavy enough gauge that uh, they're producing enough volume when you go to solo or play leads, which are an important part of bluegrass, uh, assuming you don't just want to play uh, rhythm guitar. And related to that note, also, uh, you want to make sure... Um, well, a general rule of thumb is that you'll notice most bluegrass players, the vast majority, play uh, dreadnought style acoustic guitars. Again, there are some exceptions, you know, uh, but by and large, uh, dreadnought guitars are the best for bluegrass because, again, it comes back to uh, that uh, volume and dynamics kind of middle ground uh, because the dreadnoughts uh, produce, you know, enough uh, clarity and, you know, a beautiful sound for rhythm and strumming, but they also, uh, because of the large body size, they produce an, enough volume and dynamic range to uh, make sure that your solo is able to cut through uh, the rest of the band. Um, so those are, you know, basic rules of thumb for strings and guitars and if you want specific guitar recommendations I have a whole uh, video on that just go through my backlog or just search uh, Acoustic World Bluegrass on YouTube or Google and it should come right up the guitars I recommend but uh, off the top of my head you can't go wrong with uh, a Yamaha FG830 if you're on a budget uh, that was the first acoustic guitar I ever got um, Dreadnought style I think it is rosewood back and sides um and so you know that'll get the job done uh aside from that if you are a little more advanced or have a little more money to spend uh, a martin d18 or martin d28 are both amazing instruments um the big difference between the two is just whether you want mahogany or rosewood and you know, again, I've talked about this in depth elsewhere, but mahogany tends to be a little bit punchier. Rosewood is a little bit uh, warmer, just general rules of thumb. So that's tip number one is just make sure you have uh, the right gear because if you have like a beat up $50 parlor guitar and the strings are like 20 years old and they're super thin, it's not, <laughs> it's, you're making things uh, harder than you need to. So make sure you have that in place. Um, and so tip number two would be uh, once you have all of that, the next best thing you can do is just learn the essential uh, bluegrass chords and the bluegrass chord progressions. So what do I mean when I say bluegrass chords? Obviously, like if you've uh, listened or tried to learn the genre before, you'll notice that a lot of the songs, 90% uh, of bluegrass music is in G, C, and D. Uh, and if you have a guitar, you can just use a capo to move those shapes around. Um, but within that world of like G, C, and D, uh, there's a specific way, for example, of playing the G chord. It's called the bluegrass G chord. Uh, if you just, again, Google or YouTube that, you'll find a million tutorials for it. Um, and so once you learn uh, those three chords, I mean, you'll really have like 80 to 90% of the bluegrass guitar catalog will open up for you. Again, um, you'll want to learn how to use a capo to move those shapes around the fretboard so that, so that you can match the key of whatever song you're trying to play along to. But again, like 90% of bluegrass music uh, uses those chords. And if you want to go further, uh, the next best ones to learn, I would say, are like uh, E minor, F major, and A minor. And then you'll probably, at that point, have like 95% of uh, the bluegrass catalog. Maybe an A chord, too, would be helpful. Um, so at that point, uh, once you've got your chords down and just basic get good at transitioning between them, uh, logically, you'll want to work on like strumming and rhythm patterns. 
And the classic uh, bluegrass strumming pattern is just called the boom chuck. And so it's like, ba, da, 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 da. This is where it would be a little more helpful if I had my guitar with me, but I didn't want to get distracted while going through this list. Um, but if you just uh, look up bluegrass boom chuck strumming patterns or just boom chuck strumming patterns, uh, you can find some good lessons. Uh, there's a great lesson from Andy Falco, who is an amazing uh, bluegrass guitarist. If you just search Andy Falco bluegrass rhythm, uh, I think you'll get a lot of mileage out of that because he walks through the boom chuck and then once you learn the boom chuck, there are like a million different ways to spice it up. Uh, you can do boom chucka and come back up for an upstroke. Uh, you can use uh, like I have a video lesson on here of uh, Norman Blake walking bass pattern. So you can walk into chords um, and sort of you know, tease them before the chord actually comes up in the progression, which is a fun thing you'll hear a lot of bluegrass players do, so make sure to look up that lesson. Uh, and then there are also more advanced things like cross-picking. Uh, I have a full lesson on that. Just search Acoustic World cross-picking lesson. Again, YouTube or Google should come right up for you. Um, and I go into depth kind of teaching that. That'll help. Uh, all of these things will help add variety to your bluegrass songs, so you're not just playing the same exact uh, pattern over and over and over again. Uh, so just important to help spice things up. And then at that point, I would say once you have the chords and the strumming patterns, uh, step four would be just to start learning uh, your favorite songs. So. Uh, I think this is always a good idea just for guitarists to like stay motivated anyways, but uh, if you're learning bluegrass guitar, I imagine you have favorite songs in the genre. So whether that's Tony Rice or Ricky Skaggs or Billy Strings, I would say once you have chords and strumming down, you can begin to start working on these songs. Um, and if you need extra help learning them, you know, all you have to do is type in the song on YouTube and a lot of times there will be uh, video lessons for it. Uh, or if there's not a specific, you know, video lesson, you can just type in the title of the song. So say, Freeboard Man uh, by Tony Rice, which is a cover of an Outlaws song, but you just type in Freeboard Man, Tony Rice chords into Google and uh, I think like Cowboy Lyrics is a good uh, bluegrass uh, chord chart site with lots of uh, lyrics and chords. Uh, so uh, you'll find stuff on there. Obviously Ultimate Guitar is another good one. Uh, so even if you don't find an in-depth lesson, you can usually at least find the chords for the songs that you're interested in. And if you have uh, the chords and the strumming patterns down, it makes it relatively easy now to get uh, you know, the basic foundation of whatever song you're working on and to start learning it. So uh, once you do that, uh, I would say step five learning bluegrass guitar would be to start working on uh, guitar licks and soloing. Um, and the best way to do this is, first of all, if you don't know it, I would learn the, the bluegrass G lick or the G run, it's sometimes called. Um, if again, just a quick search will bring that up. You can find lessons from free lessons from Brian Sutton, like teaching you uh, the G run, and that lick alone. If you understand music theory and like scales and stuff, uh, if you understand how that lick works, it'll give you a good idea of what a lot of bluegrass players are doing through their whole solos. Uh, but that's the first lick I would learn, and then from there, I would just search again your favorite bluegrass uh, flat picker uh, soloers and just. Uh, search for lessons on their licks. So for example, I have Brian Sutton licks on this channel. I have Tony Rice licks on this channel. Um, I would just learn those and uh, you don't want to copy their style note for note, but you can uh, string a bunch of influences from your favorite players together to create your own bluegrass soloing style. So uh, if you want to get more advanced, uh, step six, this is something I would like to start doing more of because I've mostly done like the Frankenstein approach of just stealing licks from people. Um, but step six could be like uh, transcribing or learning entire bluegrass solos. So an entire uh, guitar break. And uh, there's an amazing channel on here called Lessons with Marcel uh, where he does this. He just transcribes uh, his favorite bluegrass solos. Uh, he's got tabs for them and everything. So like Billy Strings, Tony Rice, he has their whole solos tabbed out in like hour long videos. So if you're interested in uh, 
learning that way, if that style of learning resonates with you, I would check that out. Again, I have kind of a short attention span, so I've more so just done uh, bits and pieces of Wix and tried to piece them together into my own style, but I think I'm at the stage now where I should start uh, binging Marcel's channel, so <laughs> that's a recommendation I'd give you. Uh, and step seven would be, uh, again, this is kind of optional, these last two steps at this point, but uh, this would be learning uh, bluegrass guitar from the pros. So if you look at services like Artist Works or True Fire, uh, a lot of these uh, platforms have like lessons from actual professional bluegrass players like Brian Sutton. Uh, and that's the next best thing to being taught in person by someone like this. So I would say that's uh, probably the quickest way to upskill uh, your bluegrass playing. So I hope those seven tips helped you out, guys. Uh, you can learn more at AcousticWorld.net. I've also got a uh, full um, chords, tabs, and songs, uh, chords, tabs, and video lessons for 100 songs. If you just go to AcousticWorld.net slash songs, I will email that over to you. Um, some of them are bluegrass songs, some of them are country songs, so no matter what style of music really you're interested in, uh, you'll find something cool in there. Um, but aside from that, just like the video, subscribe, and I'll come at you with some more hot tips every week. Thanks.